I used to go to um, the top ten club in Bellevue, oh. and uh, the famous Jimmy Savile yeah. used to be the DJ. Jimmy Savile. Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. god! And there was a big group on the stage, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and a group of golf <laughs> playing. And the next thing, Jimmy would come on in a pair of shorts and a pair of glasses that size, yeah. and it, it, a pair of shorts and fancy clothes. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> And I met him on teen times in Marathons. <laughs> I, I, I used to run Marathons. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what was he like, uh, Johnny? By the way, he was fantastic. He'd come down to the, <laughs> he, he'd come down to the start of a marathon. Uh, Fair play to him. <laughs> in, a ro- in a roll, a gold roll drive. Jesus. With, with a gold track suit wow. on him. What? A cigar this length. Yeah, I remember wow. the gold yeah. suit. Yeah. Wasn't that a lovely gesture of Jimmy? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's mad. If and only uh, they knew then what we know now. Oh, yeah. no, but yeah. I was coming up the mall in London, in the London Marathon. I could uh, hear everybody cheering and I thought, well, they're not cheering me. Oh, my Johnny's I, on the way. I, I, I looked behind me and who, who was coming on it? The Bowl Jimmy. <laughs> he used the to do Bowl Jimmy Savage. He used to do it. in yeah yeah okay you ready yeah okay uh welcome back to everything from nothing uh it's episode 51 of yeah. ireland's most romantic podcast <laughs> <Is it>? <laughs> <laughs> this week we're joined with mr johnny fogarty who's fresh from ireland's first dates isn't it <laughs> is it ireland's first date that's right first date there in uh, february i was on ah brilliant yeah brilliant oh yeah but we'll talk about that in a bit but you're from the bay isn't it i'm from the bay love the parish of the great lot more. Well, wow. and now you're out in Rahelty. Yeah, 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 I'm in Rahelty now. But you had a big journey between uh, Teve and Rahelty. Well, I, g- I gave 33 years then in England. <laughs> Did you? Well, what I were you doing in England? Well, I was um, labouring and then um, it was t- t- tough times and yeah. then I drove machines and then I was general foreman and then I fell 18 foot down the shaft in South Wales yeah, and that was... Wow. That was um, eighteen foot shaft. The, the, the end of my more or less working career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was very tough. I had four major operations, yeah. and the right shoulder pinned, yeah. and um, ended up with a lot of depression and broken yeah. marriage and yeah. everything. My God, yeah. What, what year did you move to England, Johnny? When did I move to England? Yeah, yeah. Sixty one. Nineteen sixty one. Nineteen sixty one. Yeah. I went over on a cattle boat. It was the male boat, the cattle boat, oh, yeah. and um, there was cattle, male, and humans on it. Yeah. That is true. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. And uh, seriously, and I mean, that's not 300 years ago. No. Yeah. I mean, that is only uh, 61. Wow. That's mad. And were you nervous going over, or were you looking forward to it? I was or? looking forward to so it. I was only a young lad at 17. Yeah. 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 And uh, then you had to, <laughs> we didn't know where we were going. Yeah. And then we, we got to crew. Yeah. And then uh, you had to change for Manchester. And wow. I should We hadn't a clue where we were going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, my friend Roger Milotny, yeah. he's, um, he and his sister and brother-in-law in Manchester. Yeah. So we went, they, they sorted us out from the beginning. But really and truthfully, though, um, it was tough. Was what it? made you go in the first place? By the way, I don't know, but I was working in the bay and... Um, of course, what's in every Irish person, they want to travel, yes. in general. Yeah, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, 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 there's that thing in us. And then um, I wanted to go and try and earn a few pounds, and I was in the way below, and, yeah, you know, it was tough. Yeah, yeah. Very, very tough. It was a big crowd of you in it, wasn't there? Yeah, there were seven yeah. of us in it. Yeah. Unfortunately, now a few, yeah. few of us are dead now, yeah. but... Um, and then the bad winter in, in, in England in 62 3. Mm. It froze for 13 weeks. Wow. And, uh, yeah, my mum always talks about that. It froze <laughs> for 13, 13 weeks. 13 weeks. Yeah. It went down three for six in the ground. And myself and my brother Tommy, God rest him, then 
we would have fought for ages. Yeah. And I was saying that, and after five weeks, I got two pounds seventeen and six. Wow. And then we got a job out digging for gas leaks. Yeah. We used to do three 12 hour shifts in minus 20. And uh, we used to get two pounds 10 shillings for the days. We used to do two days and a night yeah. for eight pounds. Was that good money then? Huh? Was that good money then? No, it wasn't. Because when I went to England, I was earning 19 pounds 10 shillings a week. But we're being exploited then. Because everybody, the buildings were all closed down. And there was no work, and people were prepared to work for anything. I walked down Stockport Road with Tommy and myself yeah. one Saturday afternoon, where the penny in a halfpenny, and not a bite to eat. Jacobs. We could stand behind that, and you wouldn't see us. We had no big bellies on us them days, I'm telling you. Not like the, a, lot, a lot of the young people today. Yeah, yeah. And that wow. is true. Wow. And I'm telling you, that is the gospel yeah. truth. And what That's you do, nice. you must be thinking, thinking hard. Thinking well, quick. Jesus, uh, oh. lucky enough, I was going out with one, and <laughs> I used to up and get an odd feed. And whatever comes with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a bit of dessert Whoa. after. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you became Rahelti's answer to Don Juan, is it? So, uh, anyway, uh, in my beloved Manchester, then I was known as Mad Johnny, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. my, my why, why is that, Johnny? I was, <laughs> I was mad, that's why. <laughs> I'd do anything. <laughs> and thank God, uh, people used to always say to me, Jesus, it's a good job you never drank. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's no, true. It's so you true. never drank, no? I never drank oh, or wow. smoked. Brilliant. Uh, what, so, what, what's, a, what's one instance where it's a good. You know that that made that a good story that sort of highlights why you were called Mad Johnny. Well, I, I was mad. I'd do anything. Yeah, and I, I used to drive around Manchester. I'd always have a holly at the side of me. If somebody caught me off, yeah. I'd jump out with the holly. <laughs> 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 I jumped out to a black man one day, and I started waving this holly. Well, and Jesus, he told me right inside. Did they know what a hurley was then, or did they just think you were some mad bastard with a big stick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But by the way, no, th that is true. And I came home in uh, '94. Uh, <laughs> but a lot more then I was known I'm uh, known in lot more as Mad Johnny. Yeah, good, no good, way. good. What did That's you think of, of Manchester and stuff when you went over? Like was it madly different from here or like Oh it was way different than here. Yeah. I mean myself and other lads we go down to an hour club at eleven o'clock at night. Couldn't be selling drink, but that time there was a lot of drugs. That was the permissive that was the early permissive society, the early 60s. Yeah. What drugs were there in that time? Big Ben? What drugs were around then? What kind of drugs? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, there was. There was, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. there was drugs there. In, yeah, yeah. Even in cafes. I used to go to Cafe Bell yeah. where there'd be a jute box and... Yeah. Yeah, and the, the people would be dancing around the jukebox, and the music yeah. was brilliant. Oh, the was music it? was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Elvis and Buddy Holly, and yeah. oh Jesus, Jiving and uh, Jiving, and then um, of course the uh, everything. Yeah. The That's Beatles right. and oh Jesus, it was a great time. Yeah. It was a fun time, and it was a tough time. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. A, there was great camaraderie with the Irish in Manchester. Yeah, the you social know. clubs, NG. Mm. The Irish social clubs. Did you have? Yeah, them? well, every church had a club, mm. and if you wanted a job, you went there, and yes. you could meet any year. Yeah, they get you fixed up with a job. That's, cool. That's mad. You wouldn't have that network, isn't it? You know, you go to the corner of a street in the morning and be there for seven o'clock, yeah. and the gang of men would come along and say, "I'll have you, you," yeah. and you jump up in the back of a wagon. Yeah. An open wagon yeah. oh, yeah. and travel 25 miles to work, rain, hail, or snow. It's like the Mexicans in America. Yeah, they in California. California. No, California. Yeah. That, is, yeah. that is gospel through it. Yeah. That's mad. Jump up in the back of an open wagon yeah, yeah. and drive 25 miles. You jump off of the wagon right. and Jesus, you'd be hardly able to walk. I know. But you, you worked your way up on that as well. You were employing a lot of lads as well. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. I became general foreman with a, a, a big company and. Yeah. I and tunneling and all like that. And did you like it? Yeah. Oh, I did. I loved yeah, it. It was yeah. tough. Yeah. It was exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be arguing with men, and in the evening you'd go into the canteen and have a laugh together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you seem like someone that'd be fun to work for. I'd say you were a good crack. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there'd be, be great crack. You'd have a row yeah. with a fella. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyway, I should was 
like it was very tough when I was working in Wales and I'd leave the house at quarter to three and drive to 100 miles to work and start at seven and work till seven or eight in the evening. Wow. And then Friday we'd start work f- at five o'clock in the tunnel and yeah. I wouldn't get home till half eight Friday evening. Oh, that's that's hard hard. Going. And it wasn't, so what, what would you get for a day of pay? Like, was it well, like, I, I, when I, you at that time now, there were two men there and th- that was a long, long time ago. Yeah. And there were two lads there. I was general foreman when I had a company van and I had pension and I was getting 650 a week, which was all right, but there was two lads there now, one from Two Mile Boris, um, Patsy Gould and Wally Blackie. They were on 1100 a week. Wow. That's mad. That was for five days. And then as well, like, yeah, whoa. But that was for five days. It's whoa. hard going though, was it, yeah? Oh, it was tough going. Yeah, yeah. 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 How but did you work your way up? Like, how did you go from, like, jumping on the back of the van and driving 25 But by the way, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I got driving a machine. And then for some reason, I'd get involved in the work mm-hmm. and saying how to do something. Yeah. Now, give me pen and paper. No good. I could hardly yeah. write my name. But I could walk through a site and know how to do it like that. Yeah. And give me pen and paper. I remember at school, the first exam, and I, out in Luke's school, I handed up an empty jotter. And after that, if I sat down to fill in, I used to never know that say, uh, fill in your surname or Christian. I, I didn't even know what was Christian name and what was surname. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was never at school. Yeah. This, this time of the year we'd be out uh, sewing spuds and spreading manure with a fork and the drills. Yeah. And um, it was, it was, what Jesus heard, it was a fierce, tough life. Mm. But yeah. thank God. Uh, um, and I mean, I'm 76 and I still love work. Brilliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're That's always correct. doing something. Aren't I you? am, yeah. 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 Did you have a big family, Johnny? Did you grow up in a big family with seven. loads of siblings? Seven. Seven. And where are you in the line of seven? I was a uh, third. Okay. Uh, there was t- Helen, Tommy, John, Fort. Fourth. Yeah, right. Mm. And did any of them go over to England as well? Or was it just well, uh, uh, my sister, she was down in Buckinghamshire, and my brother was down in Buckinghamshire. That's the Tommy. posh bit. That's posh down there. Yeah, and he, he came up to Manchester then, because they, they came home to Ireland. But, um, I know, it, 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 was, it was an exciting... I used to go to um, the Top Ten Club in Bellevue, oh. and uh, the famous Jimmy Savile yeah. used to be the DJ. Jimmy Savile. Oh, yeah. oh, my Did, God. And there was a big group on <laughs> stage, you know, yeah, yeah. and a group of golf <laughs> playing, and the next thing, Jimmy would come on in a pair of shorts, and a pair of glasses that size, yeah. and it, it, a pair of shorts and fancy clothes. <laughs> <Jesus>. and, and, <laughs> yeah. and I met him on teen times in Marathons. <laughs> I, I, I used to run Marathons. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what was he like, uh, Johnny? By the way, he was fantastic. He'd come down to the, <laughs> he, he'd come down to the start of a marathon. Fair uh, play to him. <laughs> in, in a row, in a row, a gold Rolls Royce with, with a gold tracksuit right. on it. What a cigar this length. Yeah, I remember wow. the gold tracksuit. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that a lovely gesture of Jimmy? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's mad. If and only uh, they knew then what we know now. Oh, no, but yeah. I was coming up the mall in London in the London Marathon. I could uh, hear everybody cheering and I thought, well, they're not cheering me. Oh, mad Johnny's on the way. <laughs> I, I, I looked behind me and who, who was coming on it? The bowel Jimmy. <laughs> he used to the do Jimmy He used to do his <laughs> radio show while he ran. Yeah, he, he ran 150 yeah. marathons. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You, were, you were a great runner, uh, Johnny. Uh, not too bad. Yeah, but um, I looked behind me and who was coming on it? Jimmy. Wow. Jimmy Savage. And, uh, <laughs> and I, the same day I lost two toenails and I had a big blood blister on oh, the ball. From running. Last and yeah. I thought I'd be able to dig in because the crowd lifts you. I know, yeah. But I wasn't. Oh. But That's I did. Yeah. I did, um, you did a lot of marathons. I, I, I did, yeah. I did what was tri- the first one you did? 333. And which one was that? Was London. That London. L- London was flat. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, right. Stockport yeah. was a killer. I did that one day in 60 mile an hour wind and rain. There was more louts took away in tin file. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm Jesus. telling you, that is true. <laughs> Look at that today, what's going on? They were, took away in tin file. <laughs> Ready for cooking. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not kidding you. Oh, that, that is true. That's did right, you do sir. much training That's for them? That <laughs> did you do much training for the marathons? I, I used <laughs> to run or jog 70 mile a week. No. Jesus. Whoa. To work. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I used, yeah. Whoa, uh, you had to do to, 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 to try and finish. Yeah. Uh, wow. You know. Geez, wow. you have great mental strength to keep out all that stuff going, you know. Oh, by yeah, the way, I used yeah. to get out of the van and I worked as civil engineer and, and run 10, nights, 10 mile a night home. And then Friday night I'd run 15. You'd run home. Did you enjoy it? Like the run? Like was I it did. good for the head? And I did. It was funny. To, to, it's all in the mind. Yeah. I went to. Um, a world of my own, and I, I, I always dressed in green, white, and gold. Lovely. And I'd always dreamed that I was running for Ireland. You, you didn't so. do That's the old true. red, white, and blue when you were there? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was always, it was always the grey. You, uh, you were kind of allergic to red, white, and blue. I, well, I, I was a very, very staunch old Republican very as good. well. <laughs> Does that, do you think that makes you more Republican when you're over in England? And oh, so? by the way, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. We had a Republican pub there in uh, <laughs> Otto's well, <laughs> Gas. Well, yes. well, where, where was this <laughs> pub? In Albert like Green. And um, the national anthem at, at night time when you finished yeah. it was Bobby Sands. Why you it? know, And this fellow one night, he probably thought, fuck it, I'm not doing Bobby, Bobby Sands, Sands, you know. Yeah. And next he didn't stand up. Wow. Next he got a loop on at the bottom of the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> and he was flat out. Everybody <laughs> walked over him going out. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. what, what was the pub? Um, what was the pub? Do you remember? No. I forget the yeah. name. It was a Donegal man had uh, it. It was a good right. crack, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just as it was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, we used to go on marches. And we used to march for um, the Manchester Martyrs yes. in February, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Up to Moston Cemetery. There's a big... Um, monument in Master Cemetery for the Manchester Martyrs, okay. Alan Larkin and O'Brien. Oh. And there's a stone from the 32 counties in that monument. Oh, lovely. Oh. That's nice. And That's we used good. to march up there every year. Oh. And we got stoned and bricked. And <laughs> the, 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 I bet you the, did. They the, the <laughs> take our photograph and next thing, something happened. It's six or four, five o'clock in the morning. Hey, Paddy, where were you such an idiot? <laughs> Come on, Paddy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's my... Oh. oh, by the way, it was mad. Yeah, and yeah. And we, we didn't care. That's know. right. <laughs> you know, we, 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 yeah. were, we were so hyper. Yeah. Yeah. And it was always Manchester that you were in for the whole time. Yeah, but I there. worked all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in civil engineering, um, you, where you followed yeah. the money. You could stay in the buildings around Manchester. The money was rubbish. You work at work at eight till half four. Mm. Was um, civil engineering is serious, isn't it? You know, so, but yeah. if they, when you travelled, you you had good money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And they need to be able to rely on someone in civil engineering. Oh yeah, and, that, uh, that's and um, yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was a very tough. It was a tough life. Yeah, and I've had a tough life, mm. but uh, I have a son and daughter in Manchester. Uh, I have a son, fifty-five. Okay. A daughter, fifty-three. Brilliant. And a son, thirty-five. Yeah. And That's they're all still over there, are they? Sorry. The kids are all still over in Manchester. Yes, two of them are. Yeah. My son, I have a son here living in Ireland beside me. Ah, right. Okay. That's nice, isn't yeah. It? yeah. James. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. No James. Yeah. So he put me in for first date. Oh, was it? <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. Well, tell us how did that oh, yeah, happen? Yeah. So what? For, first yeah. dates is a TV show. That's what was. What's the premise TV show? So just get. It's kind of like. A, is it like a blind date? Um, well, it is TV. like a yeah. blind date. Yeah. 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 And, and they match you up with somebody. Yeah. And yeah. So what, was it James's idea or what was it? It was James, and he came out in the air one day with the phone, yeah. and he said. My red is on the phone. Well, I went out with a girl in Dublin yeah. for 11 years. Yeah. And she was called Mairead. I remember that. So yeah. I thought it was Mairead. Yeah. So anyway, this one, I spoke to her. And from the time she spoke to me, she, she, somehow she, she talked to me. And, um, will you go on it? I said, I don't think I will. I had a guan, John. She said, it's a good laugh. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I did do. Yeah. And then it, last October... I went up to Dublin for to do an interview for it. A yeah. bit like this, yeah, you know. Yeah. 
and um, ask you all these questions and one thing and another. So, so that, that was basically it, you know. Yeah. And I said I would. And um, then I went up to Dublin. But it was awkward enough with the six foot apart and okay. the, yeah. the masks. And yeah. You weren't able to go up and give somebody a cuddle or yeah. uh, a bit of yeah, black no, air, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but it went really well, though, didn't it? Yeah, it so you were, well. you were on the show. What was the name of the woman that you... Mary. Uh, Mary, oh. okay. Mary from Tipperary. Okay, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and Mary, how, yeah. And how did it get on? The day I watched the clip of it. I could only find the clip of it on YouTube, and it looked like you had a bit of crack, like... Oh, yes. It, it went fine. I'll be honest with you, when I watched it back with my son mm. at yeah. home... I had no clue what I'd done or what I said. <laughs> and, uh, We're like that with this, yeah, yeah. honestly. That yeah. But the response from it was unreal. The response yeah. was unreal. Isn't it the most, did I see that most was the most viewed, viewed episode? Right, yeah. 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 Wow. It's the most yeah. popular one, yeah. Yeah. That's, mad. Yeah, That's really good. After honestly, I'd be honest, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Even people still come up to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, as Walter Cross told us there one day, and this woman was going the other way, I seen you on telly. You were great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's mad. You get you get a bit of that now if people shouting at you to recognize yeah. you. Like. I was sat in the van one day and this one blonde one walked down by me and she looked at me in the van. I was up there in Lac de Galle yeah, yeah. and she stopped and came back and I let the window down and she said, "Are you the man after telly?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah." I said, "Are you free?" <laughs> she said, "Unfortunately, no." <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on with Mary? Because it looked like uh, well. Mary. Mary seems a lovely lady, Absolutely. but we met in yeah. in Cashel for lunch yeah. uh, in the middle of December. But I haven't seen her since. Oh, okay. So you met her once after the day, yeah, just like, once. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you'd need to meet a few times to see, yeah. uh, you know, whether uh, yeah. there's anything there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know. Are you still in touch? Are you still in touch? Oh, we're still in touch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're still in touch during me at the odd time, or mm. I recall. But, I mean, um, you know, I know it isn't like meeting somebody back in the early 60s, the permissive society. Yeah. I used to know these fellas, we used to go to this <laughs> cafe, and we'd say, I'd go in and meet you, and your name is, we'd say, Mary or whatever. Yeah. And they'd be only going out with you a couple of days, you used to get a needle, an ink, and I love Mary, right? <laughs> they used to tattoo yeah. it on their hand. Oh, and then they'd, they'd be get, you'd be gone from him in a week. <laughs> That's mad. And they'd be oh. stuck with this tit. Well, you'd have to get another girl called Mary, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to have a big list of long, long you Oh, yeah, they used to do it with a needle and ink. God. And you'd see their hand in a big blister for a few days oh afterwards. Oh, my God. You didn't have any, any done yourself, Johnny? No, I didn't. I'll be honest with you. Kieran used to have I Love Mary written on I his arm. I did, covered up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the one thing that I'd like to have done is that mum and dad, you know? Oh, yeah. <coughs> it's never too that. late. Yeah. Would, you, would, late. You, would you? Oh, yeah. Would you yeah. still get one? Would I would, yeah. Would mom, you? Mum and dad. Oh, yeah. Okay. That'd be nice. No, I love my parents. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, I think that's I've spoken of. I mean, no. Does somebody else want to talk? And <laughs> 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 they be saying, "Is this a one-man show?" Well, it's not. Johnny, what made you come back to Ireland? Like, well, I had a bad accident. I fell eighteen foot down a shaft, yeah. and Jesus. my wife was English, and then she wanted to come back. She thought Ireland would be lovely. Yeah. It's lovely for a holiday, but. Yeah. An awful lot of people. <laughs> uh, the difference between two weeks and everybody being lovely to you and coming to live here, and suddenly everybody said, you're a blow-in. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yep. and I resented that so much yeah. because it was people like me that went to England Got or Australia or wherever, and I was sent home six pounds every yeah. two weeks Absolutely. to daddy and mammy. That was back in the early 60s. Yeah. And, and there was loads of people like that was bringing, money, bringing money back to Ireland. Correct. From yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. That, that was their only source of income back in Correct. the day. Correct. Yeah. A six pound back in 62, three was a lot of money. Yeah. Was, yeah. Times and the amount of people like were, who else yeah, was Yeah. And I've seen people from the west of Ireland coming over there to Manchester. And some of them probably, they had them probably a, a, a backside in their trousers. Yeah. And they were 14 years of age. Yeah. And I tell you one thing. I, I was on the train one day talking to somebody like we're talking here. Yeah. And this fellow was sat across and he had phones on his ears and he took them off and he was listening to me. And then he asked me to go on some radio show talking like we're talking here. Yeah, yeah. And I, I gave him his 
he gave me his number to ring him to do this show, but of course I never, I you know. know. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I think you're right. I think we, we should nearly have a day of thanks for all the people that sent, sent money back to this country. Oh, by the way, I'll yeah. tell you one thing without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I since and we we did we did we didn't show any gratitude and we blackguarded them. Yeah, um, yeah. They, like if you look at the likes of Tom Gilmartin, who made a fortune over in England and, yeah. and tried to put it back into the country, we robbed him. Yeah, Ro- robbed the man and, yeah. and showed no regard for him. That's mad. Um, it's terrible, isn't it? It, it is terrible. I, I was listening to the radio one day, uh, going to Dublin in, in the van, and um, this woman, uh, she she was she's Irish, a very educated woman, and all like that. Yeah. And she was talking and she's saying, a lot of the young fellas today couldn't put in a bulb. And she said, the men, I mean, the Manchester Ship Canal was dug by Irishmen, you know, yeah. with a shovel. Was it? I didn't yeah. And um, when you take, she, she was saying, all these people that work in tunneling and civil engineering and all like that. And now I knew lads that became millionaires that couldn't hardly write their name the same as myself. But I mean, they were never appreciated. No, no. They were exploited. They were. It's madness, yeah. like. But they were exploited. Yeah. Right. You'd always get the clever gagner man. He'd have a rake of people working. At that time, there could be a hundred people along the s- footpath digging with a foot yeah. iron yeah. and a spade that length yeah, yeah. for cables, you yeah. know. Wow. But he'd be the clever fella. You'd be watching him. And he'd go to the cemetery during the week and get dead men. Oh, yeah. What? And, he, and he'd do what? I heard of that. What yeah, would he yeah. do? Uh, get dead men. He, he'd have people booked in that wouldn't be working, and he'd have an envelope for himself. No, <laughs> there could what? be hundred people working, and he. That was it, a common thing, wasn't it? Wait, so uh, they, they used to say, "Go to the cemetery, get dead men." <laughs> Whoa! So, so like so you want say you'd have Johnny Diggin, Hugh Diggin, and some other dead man that it doesn't exist. So you put his name down, yeah. Like, yeah, from a grave, like so. That's, that's Whoa! That's <laughs> <hard>. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'll tell you something. I'll be honest with you. That God is my God. I could write three books on, yeah, on facts, not fiction. And there's yeah. a, a, loads of scams, I'd say, was there? Oh, of course, there was. Yes, and it works that. The, the, at that time, that the the Clark works wouldn't be on big money. Of course, the Paddies would uh, blackmail him. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. that um, give him plenty of dairy Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, he, he let yeah. a lot of things go. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Th- that's, right. that's the way the system seemed to work back then, wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, everything. Uh, yeah, even uh, in uh, Ireland. Yeah, there was yeah. The same I thing. mean, um, lads coming in and um, the big. Uh, I remember I was on a big job for Wimpies below near Liverpool, Cantrell Farm, yeah. there'd be loads of stone coming in there, somebody signing, and they'd go off somewhere else, do you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. 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 But at the same time, companies made an awful lot of money. They did, they could yeah. afford it. Uh, even though they're saying that, but they made an awful lot of money. But then I was general foreman, and next thing, everything changed. There was not only programmes, uh, oh, I know, and yeah, yeah. everything was programs. The contracts manager yeah. come out, and um, we, we, we could be ahead on fifteen things, and we'd be ahead, uh, behind on something yeah. that we haven't got the material. Why? Yeah. Know, yeah. Why? Everything was why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what, and what's your like? Because the way the world is now, like construction sites are kind of a good example. Like it sounded like things got done quicker back then like from my perspective people talk about things got done you did it there was no ticking boxes there was no By the way, that. they were way done quicker the amount yeah. of work that was done there was yeah. unreal yeah and today now you can't go down three foot without shuttering yeah and all, it, all it is is in your way and, and so like what they'll say is it's it's health and safety thing but do you from your perspective and honestly are people getting hurt less since all this ticking boxes stuff but by the for on construction sites and stuff. No, there'll always be accidents. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, when you were in tunneling and all like that, tunneling now. Yeah. And I mean, if you were the same with benching a manhole, if you were to wear all this tackle. Yeah. It was a hindrance. Yeah, it's mm. nearly dangerous. And it was a hindrance. Yeah, yeah. So, so you had your big accident. So How did it, this big accident happen that time? You, you went down 18 foot a hole. I, I, I was... Uh, I sat with two lads the week before, and, and it was a Monday evening, I will remember it. And um, so t- a shaft is like that, yeah. round, a big round, and there was timbers going across, yeah. and it was 55 foot deep. Yeah. And you go down like that onto landing bay, and then you go like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go yeah, yeah. like yeah. that. And um, 
So I was knocking out these timbers, but whoever put in the timber was only held in by wedges. When oh, I knocked off these other no. timbers, it came loose. Oh, shit. And I, I, I fell 18 foot down. Yeah. And lucky enough, there was timber against the manhole or yeah. I'd have been killed. Yeah, yeah. And then I landed on my right side. I know. And I, I climbed out of that shaft on my own. Oh, you're joking. Oh, my God. I did. And the ambulance were on strike. And I thought, I'm going to die because inside me, I was on fire. That shoulder was pulled out. The collar had there so that was it Precise, opened yeah. up uh, four times. Yeah. yeah, it was opened up four times there for four major operations. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus, I climbed out of that on my own. Yeah. And then a young lad there that I started to, during the week yeah. took, helped me down to another shaft where the agent was. Yeah, yeah. And he took me into hospital. And I went into hospital, I don't know what hospital, but then I was lying on a bed and um, the agent came in and a labourer and the doctor said to him, he said, hold his legs, they had a towel under me here. Dislocated shoulder and they pulled it back in. And they were trying to pull it back in and I was sucking gas and the pain... Yeah. Now I can withstand any pain. You could drive a needle through me yeah. and it wouldn't bother me. Yeah. The pain I was passing out. Oh, no. They failed to pull it in and then they took me off and put me into a bed somewhere where the pain was unreal. Yeah. And it was full of muck and dirt. Yeah. You know you do it. And, yeah. um, so anyway, be Jesus, uh, about one or two o'clock in the morning they came back and took me down and uh, it was a lovely feeling, this cold stuff going up me out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> what, what, what feeling, was it? This cold yeah. stuff. <laughs> and, and no, they say, uh, count to ten and you yeah. get to like four and you're, you're gone. Yeah. You're, you're gone. Yeah. 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 But then I was in a, a cast for eight weeks oh, with the shoulder like that. The whole arm would cast. Like yes. what, oh, yeah, wow. that you were plastered with... Um, <sighs> down to your waist, uh, and a pole underneath you here. And it was like that for eight weeks. Yeah. And they took it off, um, and then they, 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 they held me arm, uh, and then I couldn't lift me arm. Okay. All the muscles from there were completely ripped off oh. my shoulder. God. So the, the, the surgeon said it's the same as the skin off of your head being peeled off. Oh, whoa. And all the muscles had started trying to grow themselves. So yeah. then they operated on me there, and it wasn't a success. Right. And they did f- three operations to try and save the arm, mm. Professor Wallace below in Nottingham. Mm. And uh, they didn't. Mm. But then um, they had to pin the arm, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I'll never forget that. I went into hospital. They take off your arm and rub all the shiny part off of it, yeah. in the cuff and everything. And the pain, oh Jesus, it was horrendous. And I was in um, the Alexandra Hospital in Bupa, mm. and the sweat was coming out of me. I, w- I was on morphine. They had a thing around my neck, and you press it to, mm. put it, you know. Well, yeah. And yeah. Jesus, if I closed my eyes, these big things was coming to eat you up. Wow. And the fear and uh, hallucinating. Like, yeah, you're like hallucinating, was oh, it? By it? the way, it was... It was and I, I got nothing out of the accident because of General Foreman. Mm. Right. I got 65,000 and 5,000. The bill that went in for me was 670,000. Oh. Yeah, because I was going to say, Bupa's private in the UK. Like you were in the Bupa hospital there. Yeah. It's private, yeah. Yeah. Well, the company had me in Bupa. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, the right. company it's had. It's good that uh, you Yeah, the company had me in Bupa. Yeah, so yeah. I got the finest of treatment, but yeah. Yeah. still. Uh, they didn't, the arm wasn't saved. Yeah. I mean, that's the size they had the lift. God, since you know? then, like... Yeah. But you're, you, you kind of manage anyway. You still yeah. m- oh, I built an extension yeah. and I built a conservatory. And yeah. I, yeah. I, I can do anything. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Are you still doing a bit of work here? Uh, well, I am at home. I have a house and my son is in another house and yeah. I can do bits of plumbing, plaster and block yeah. laying. I can do anything. So if, if people watching this, they can give you a call if they if they're looking for to do any of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, I'm call. getting a bit long in the tooth <laughs> now for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, wait, is there a story behind the hat? 
Well, yeah. this came from Australia. Okay, right. So they did the great Greg Norman, oh, the wow. golfer. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. That's the, the his uh, his crest. Yeah. His, oh wow! So did you yeah. go to Australia? No, I've never been. Okay. Um, a few years ago, I was going to a girl in Dublin. Her and her friend went to New Zealand and um, Australia and all like that. So she brought it back for me. Oh wow! Uh, That's and cool. I I wear different hats. I love hats. I yeah. Yeah, you have cool. a great sense of adventure. You're always doing something new. And yeah. Every time I meet you, you have a new girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say, you ladies, man, like you got oh, <laughs> definitely. You, uh, you know, um, the Don Juan or a Hail Tea. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I think. Uh, Life is uh, for living, isn't I it? I know. Like, I think uh, I love a bit of crack. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. in civil engineering in, in England, yeah. Yeah. like I'd be walking down to the canteen in the morning. Yeah. And you could be with us. Yeah. I meet good friend Sean Daly. He's yeah. dead now. God yeah. rest him. Yeah. But uh, I say to him now, I'll bring up something controversial. Yeah. And I bring up <laughs> something controversial, you know. <laughs> and he disagree with me. Oh, Lord Jesus, the whole canteen had been war. A full-on <laughs> row, yeah? I'm not kidding you. And you oh. sit back and watch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'd stay as involved. Going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would. Oh, no. If I lit the fire, I'd keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, how come you don't drink or smoke? Because that's unusual for... Well, yeah. a counsellor said that to me. Yeah. And I had counselling. Mm. And a counsellor said that. I said that to her. I said to Mammy at seven. Mm. God rest Mammy. And uh, I said, I'll never drink or smoke. And I seen something twice. And I was terrified. Okay. And uh, I never drank. And I always knew, now when I went through broken marriages, I went through hell. Mm. And still, I mean, my first marriage broke up and I brought up my two kids on my own, Jackie and Dennis, they were nine and 11 and mm. one thing and another. And uh, so, I mean, people used to say, aren't you great? You're not great. You have kids, you have to look after them. Mm. And uh, if I was drinking there now and going to the pub, I'd look at the bottom of the glass. My kids would have been in a home. Yeah, yeah. Or, oh, you know, yeah. Uh, it's not their fault. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed with my dad. My parents got divorced and we lived with my dad. And it was still in the 80s, it wasn't done. You know, it was unusual for yeah. dad to bring up the kids. Yeah. What, yeah, what did you have the counselling for? Depression. And was that after the accident? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could go out now and I could see work going on and I'd watched people doing work, driving yeah. a mechanical digger. I love driving the diggers and you'd watch work going on and all like that. And um, I'd come home and cry. Yeah. And I used to do a bit of golfing and then I would just go down where the Irish play hurling and football in Manchester and start hitting the ball after the accident. And I wouldn't be able to hit it often came home and from the golf clubs in the garage and cried, you know. Oh, it was terrible. When I was in that cast, yeah. I often go up at three o'clock in the morning and walked around the house and you fall into bed like that. Yeah. I looked out the window crying at three o'clock in the morning. And if I, I got n no compensation out of it as such, yeah. I got 60,000 really. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, what I went through, if I got two million, it wouldn't pay me. Yeah. yeah, but what I went through, and that, seriously, yeah. you know, and what's sad is that so many people get so many much money for fraud and, mm. and genuine cases don't, don't, get don't. It. Yeah. and it's yeah. so sad. Mm. And sad, like I it. never told one lie about my accident, Absolutely. but because I was general foreman, the agent blamed me. Okay. He oh, said right. I should have hired a crane with a man riding skip. That's mental. Did the counselling help? Big pardon? Did the counselling help when you had it? I did. And I had a great counsellor when I came home here, a woman below in Kilkenny, Thomastown, Brian Cody's sister-in-law. She was marvellous. I went down there, and I remember the first time I went to her, I was there two hours, and I cried and cried and cried. She went right back to my childhood. Yeah. She was brilliant. And every time I went, I cried a bit less. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, she was excellent. And did you feel like, especially, I definitely experienced that as well. And I was like, yeah, like, 
when I went to counseling before, it was like stuff from when I was younger. And it's like sometimes it's not even like big stuff. Like I had a fairly like good childhood. Like I was lucky with my parents and stuff like that. So like, but like I just remember like, yeah, going to counsel and talking about is a real like sense of liberation or freeing to like sort of discover things you didn't know and stuff like that. Did you fr- like? Did you feel that sense of lighter after? Oh, you that, do like, feel. Yeah. You do. You do. Uh, yeah. And uh, she, she said to me, I was there, and she said, I was sat there, and my feet up on this, yeah. you know. Yeah. <coughs> and she said to me, John, she said, just imagine now you're going up a mountain. I said, yeah. And uh, there's a footpath to the right-hand side. I said, yeah. You go up there, and at the top of that hill, there's a hut. And there's a man in that hut. And she said, is there anything striking about that man? Uh, I could see this man, a tall man with long grey hair, but yeah. the one striking thing about him was his blue eyes. Yeah. And she said, Is was there anything striking about that man? I said, His blue eyes. Mm. She said, Do you know who that man was? I said, No. She said, That man was you. Yeah. That's mad. Looking at yourself. That's amazing. And honest to God. Yeah. Wow. Did you find it difficult to, to go to counselling in the first place? Because quite a lot of people of a certain age, particularly guys in Ireland, would find it... By the way, that, that is true. Mm-hmm. But honest to God, I didn't. I had counselling in Manchester. Mm. Mm. And I remember these fellas came around and these two guys, they were head top of Shell Isle. Yeah. And... Uh, they had they, they had fierce depression. Yeah. And he told me, I, I went the same. I couldn't open a letter. Mm. Or if I seen you coming down the street when I was depressed, yeah. I'd walk to the other side of the yeah. road. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And, and people, you know, I, yeah. I went... It's it's really cool to like it's not yeah. cool to hear that that happened, but it's really cool to hear you talking about it because I d- I think people have this idea that anxiety and depression is sort of a twenty first century invention or something. Oh, by like the way, that. I I I I went into funerals yeah. and uh, I'd look at the person in the coffin. Yeah, and I wished I was that person. Really, that is true. The other, the other thing I noticed about you is you're a very empathetic person. Like you're, you're, you would look out for others a lot. You know, I would, yeah. And like even I, I'd, I'd know you a good while or whatever. You, I remember you give me your number, saying call anytime. You know, yeah, way, that kind of thing. You know, you would be kind of aware of other people, wouldn't you? I that? would, yeah, yeah. Which which is rare for for like the Irish man, especially like back, like you know, so an Irish man of your age, like that's like it's a, it's rare to like I don't know to be to be open and stuff. Yeah. Like was it? I don't know. Like was there looking sort of back where you're at now and wh- the way you see the world now and stuff like is there any sort of good was there any like good from what happened like in, in terms of how it led to where you are now it's hard to say even last night now I was watching a bit of uh, the late late and I seen three lads there on about depression yeah uh, I turned it off because I felt myself getting depressed I did the same yeah, yeah. I did <laughs> I turned it off because I felt myself yeah. I felt Bringing you down. Yeah. 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 I did. I turned it up because I f- felt the pressure coming on. Kay. It's like, to me, depression is like, um, it's an, it's like an addiction. Mm. It's always there. Mm. Yeah. It, it's always there. And I, that's how I try to keep busy and keep motivated yeah. and keep doing things. This is like, wow, there's so true. much kind of focus on talking about it. And the thing is, when you talk about it, it generates that biochemistry within the body. Oh, it does. Because your thoughts go that way. And that's what, when you describe it as like an addiction, is the body knows very efficiently how to throw that biochemical switch. It is. And get it on is. That It's like train. an addiction, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, d- and then from that place, it's almost like trying to boil water with your own mind to bring yourself back up oh yeah mm. there's you know, no doubt so about it i mean and I, I hear people saying and you hear people talking about depression and all like that some people haven't a clue mm. uh, yeah they're, 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 there's some people think if they're fed up they're depressed know, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. and depression is when you're in that dark hole uh paul and cody said to me below on kilkenny thomastown said john when you're in that dark hole and I don't know whether any of you been in it. Definitely, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I've been in when it. I, when uh, I was younger, but... Yeah, yeah, loads of times. Yeah. And she said, you're like a chicken in an egg. Yeah. She said, 
you have to keep picking at one spot till you see a bit of daylight. Mm. The thing is, though, you could be in that hole, there could be two fucking shovels next to you and you wouldn't see them. You wouldn't. To dig yourself No, when yeah. you're in that that's dark hole, really that's and, true. and I'll be honest with you, really I'll tell true. you one thing, I went out in the shed a couple of times, uh, you know, and I'll never forget it, and I cried and cried and cried on my own. And I'll tell you one thing, that is when, I mean, I hear people saying when somebody commits suicide, they're selfish, they're not selfish. Mm. And I did that, that. I resent mm. that comment very much, yeah, and that too. hurts me when I hear people saying that. Mm. Because I was at that store with depression, and by God, I'll tell you one thing: them people that say that, they haven't a clue. They right. haven't. No. They're, they're, just they're, they're so well. disconnected. Yeah, and uh, I said on Tip FM, I was on a program, and I said, if you know somebody with depression, put your arm around them and say, "I'm there for you," mm. but don't say, "Take how." I actually say, take how lucky you are. Look at so and so yeah, down the road. That is no good to somebody that's no. taking a committing suicide. Yeah. yeah, I heard a woman on the radio saying something like that. She was saying, like, you know, she suffers badly from depression, and her friends would say, but you have a lovely husband, you know, and all this kind of thing. She says, well, if you broke your leg, you wouldn't say to somebody, you have a lovely husband, run it, run it off there. You have a lovely yeah, husband. Yeah, that's how so a true. lovely husband going to get you out of this yeah, depression? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's you know, so and, true. and 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 you li- like people, you know, uh, that uh, often commit suicide with their kids, and people say, "Oh, they're selfish," so and so. They're not because you okay. can't think any other way when you're in yeah. that mind state and you reach that point. There Correct. is only that direction. You do not see any other option or alternative. And uh, yeah, because yeah. I woke up one morning in Manchester. My first wife, she was a chronic alcoholic. God rest her, she's dead now. But, I mean, um, she um, went off with another alcoholic because they understand each other, yeah, of course. you know. Yeah. And so, um, but I remember waking up in the mornings after that, uh, the police came around to search the house that hadn't killed her and all like that, you know. She went mis- she was found in Scotland. But, I mean, um, I woke up there every morning crying. Yeah, it's tough. God. You know, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, everything that I say... Uh, it's a hundred percent, and I don't exaggerate. I try yeah. to play down things, but I'll be honest with you: when you're there, by God, there's a lot of people, though, isn't there, in that position? But they kind of keep it to themselves. You know what I but mean? But yeah. you shouldn't. No, you no. should come out mm. and express yourself. And there'll be always somebody. It doesn't matter. There'll understand. be always somebody to say, "Oh, yeah, it's mm. just this, that, and the other." But you're not. But well, you know when you're talking to somebody yeah. that's gone through some. It's like talking to somebody that's been to New, New York and they're yes. telling you about it. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know. But, yeah. but the, the what is really starting to change, and it already has changed in other countries with approaches to mental health, is that it's become a lot more solution-focused. Ireland is still a little bit stuck in the kind of, we need to talk about it. But actually, like the things you were saying about keeping busy and kind of like you know, getting focus and having distraction things and things that you do each day, mm. that's really important. That's the, the stuff that will bring you out of it and keep you motivated for it. It does. And I I went to a counsellor. Um, I went to a, a particular counsellor, and now she it was a woman, and she hadn't a clue. She read out of a book. And you see... Book people, you can't beat experience. Yeah, that's true. Definitely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Experience, I mean, uh, uh, you know, and um, you, you can't beat experience. You can't. You just, there's literally not one other thing that can. Uh, by the way. Think, like, everybody has their own way out of it as well. So you have to make it personal. As much as your road into it is personal, your road out of it is very personal. You have to be well. strong. Yeah. And you have to say, if I, I'm going to do this. And it's like yeah. being in yeah. for the long road. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I, yeah. To her, I always like, like that whole thing of like, yeah, people saying it's selfish and stuff. I remember there, and I was about 13 or something on Facebook, and I was like really just in a like bad place, whatever. And I'm really grateful that like at the time it was just when I was younger and I'd gone through it and stuff. And you know, you have that down days, but as you said, that's not depression. It's just like, but people think it's always depression because, but whatever. But like, yeah, and I remember seeing this mad, this like Facebook status and it was like the whole w- it was being shared around the whole country it was like a page long and the whole status was saying like it started with like 
if you're thinking about uh, committing suicide, I want you to read this first. Yeah. And it was a whole thing is think about, and the whole thing was like, there was a paragraph about your mother. It was like, think about your mother who's downstairs cooking the dinner and all this stuff. And at that age, and all my friends were sharing and everyone was like sharing it with love hearts, like getting this around there. And at that age, I was like, that is one of the most horrible things I ever read in my life. It was so backwards. None of it made any sense. And the whole world was sharing it. And the, the, the thing is as well, no hatred behind the people sharing it because they just don't get it and they didn't see it. But they just la- like they were doing it from good intentions because they just thought it was the right thing. But it was so far from the truth. It was one of the worst things I'd ever read. It was like, you know, think about your brother who's out cycling or think about and all this stuff. It was just like that is like the mo- most backwards thing I'd ever said. Because, and anyway, where I'm going with that again is like I think people like have this idea of like think about all the people that love you and stuff like that but like they don't you don't feel that at the time and i think what you need to do is not help show people all the people that love you yeah that can help some people but those people need to find that love for themselves and the love for their life again they don't need like and that's the thing people fail to see is just like that they they need to find that love from themselves or life and this whole thing of like yes it's so mad like that is true yeah it's about getting your purpose back yeah Yeah. your own connection back. yeah you need to most helpful like and you were on your journey kind of coming up a bit, you know. <laughs> Whatever it is, thanks be to God. I, 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 well, there's no halo over my head, I know, yeah. but I love religion and yeah. um, one to another. And um, I have, you know, I pray and I, yeah. um, you just found as a prayer, I remember a priest saying one time at Mass, he was walking up and down the aisle and he was saying like, uh, God forbid to be a terrible tragedy, somebody, and he'd say, I offer, how did that person go through that? And this is what I believe. And the priest said, and I do think he was right, he said, you find inner strength, and mm. I do. And now you in the funeral business yeah, yeah. see that yeah. more so than... You, you do, they do. You, you see that yeah. now a lot, where young mm. people die and... You see the family getting in their strength, and you you you're having contact with them yeah. people. You know when you hear about some sort of tragedy or something like that, and you're on the outside, and you're going, "Oh my God, I hope they're okay," or whatever. You know you hear. Yeah. Them, but when you actually are close with them, you get a bit of comfort uh, seeing this. Yeah. 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 Well, that uh, that is it. I actually That's think really when you're true. doing a funeral, you're at the eye of the storm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of the sadness and the hurt or whatever. That that's yeah. the yeah. worst. But when you're with the family, you get relief out of seeing that they're okay yeah. right, right now. Yeah. So yeah. And that's they do get I inner strength. I yeah. You do. And yeah. I totally believe in that. And the priest said, he said, I even myself, he said, and you think, how are they going to? And he said, you do. And I yeah, found that. I got inner strength. Lovely. And I looked after my kids. And I, did, and I pushed myself. Well. And it's not easy. You have to push yourself to do it. It's very easy to lie in the chair or sit in the city, yeah. and I can't do this. Now, yeah. I have only one arm. I built an extension. I built a conservatory. Yeah. I built everything. Yeah, yeah. And I went out doing work for other people. Yeah. yeah. That's two true. arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The lazy you know, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, there's some people too out. I can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, if yeah. you set your own limitation, yeah. that whole thing of what I can't, I'm not able, then keep your limitations, you know? Yes. It's like if you yeah. fight for those limitations, keep them. Yeah. yeah. I go up on the roof in the morning. I go up on this roof in the yeah. morning. That's right. Yeah, that's I really true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but by the way, I, I, I mean, I tell you the truth. It, it's fantastic, though. Yeah. It's like when when you're depressed and down now, yeah. like talking, like we're here talking yeah. about things and having a laugh. That releases tension. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. Awesome. because that laughing changes your biochemistry again. So yeah, it has. It's totally. altered yeah. your biochemistry back yeah. out of it, and that's yeah. why it's good to kind of be around people and to do shit because you're changing your body's physiology. Yeah, yeah. And it is all about inner strength. Mm-hmm. And believe you me, this man here knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because being in the funeral business, I mean, you see people and uh, tragedies, suicides and all like that and where people are distraught. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's awful. It is, um, mm. Can I ask you, like, as you said, like, you know, you're... Um, like, yeah, you know, you're to church and God and stuff. And I've actually, like, you know, reading the Bible a lot lately myself. And there's a lot of stuff in it I really like. And I've been 
you know, I, I've had experience as well with praying and stuff like that. I'm just wondering, have you ever had like a direct experience of like where you might have, I don't know, for lack of better, like descriptive terms, like needed a message or something or needed or something that stood out where you were in a dark time and then all of a sudden like, you know, a very uh, bizarre experience might have happened that might have brought you out of it that felt like sort of maybe a gift from God or... Well, I have, I have felt that and yeah. I... I Paul Japan now is a person I pray to every night. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm reading a book about him at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was funny, a yeah, me too. I'm really? Yeah, yeah, my pa- mother has Pedro Pio's oil. Yeah. Oh, pa- pa- that's my I, I, I pray to Paul Japan every night. Yeah. I pray to Pope John Paul mm. and Father John Fogarty from Lockmore. Wow. And I pray every night. And yeah. um, seriously, I get great. And I prayed for things that's happened. That I, I wanted something to happen, yeah. and I prayed to Paul to appear and to happen. Yeah. And sometimes I could see a vision, yeah. and it would happen. And I thought, well, I won't say anything yeah. because I knew it was going to happen. I mean, oh but my God, that's so ma- yeah, yeah, sorry, just you know. Yeah. And, uh, seriously, that's just true. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know. And uh, but I know it's it's life is it throws up so much. Yeah, and uh, I know but life is. Uh, it can be very tough, and um, I never forget a good turn that anyone do for me. But I never forget yeah. that turn either. <laughs> 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 I'm like an elephant. <laughs> do you get the hurly out on them again? Sorry. Do you get the hurly out on them again? I get the hurly out. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh Jesus! So it's, oh no, it's it's uh, true. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I think that's mad that we're all praying to Padre Pio at the same time. Yeah. Well, uh, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Have a friend that's sick, and that's what we're praying for him. You know. That yeah, so I, there was a documentary on last night about the unexplained mm. on mm. television, and yeah. they were on about Padre Pio yeah. for yeah. all the world, and there was someone saying that he faked this thing on his hands Just and all like that. Right. Mm. You know, you always get people, and uh, mm. what I find Padre Pio, and um, there was a girl in Dublin, my partner's daughter, she used to get pregnant. And she used to lose it all the time, you oh, know. Oh God. And uh, anyway, I, I was going to Mass every Sunday up there. And so I said, I'll light a candle and say a prayer for you yeah. and pray to Padre Pia. Yeah. yeah. And she got pregnant and she had two children. Oh, wow. wow. That's, That's really amazing. cool. And I'll be honest with you, one day I said to her, I was above at the house. Yeah. And I said, sometime, I said, if you get a chance, I said, uh, say a prayer to Padre Pia. And she turned around and, and the cold shivers are going through. She said, what for? And I thought, well. <sighs> and yeah. that's really, even yeah. that hurts me now. Mm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's mad. Uh, it I, is. Yeah. It's really interesting what you said about division stuff. Why we could, stuff I've been coming across lately about the Bible and stuff is sort of, a lot of it, it seems like, was is misinterpreted and that people take it, like, the wrong way and stuff. And I think even if you don't, like, you know, c- connect to God or whatever, there's still a lot of mad value in the Bible. So, like, there's all this stuff, like, uh, with quantum physics and there's, like, there's science, there's now been science formed around uh, manifestation and, and, so, and all this stuff. And essentially, it's... The part that's misinterpreted in the Bible is that praying to God or like, you know, the whole asking you will receive and all this stuff like that's said over and over and over again. And everyone's heard it in the church, but no one actually kind of listens close enough. And I think the whole thing is sort of really, it, it goes hand in hand. I don't know, all these beliefs, whether science, religion and stuff I'm finding lately is all saying the same thing. And I'm finding a lot of stuff in the Bible lately that a lot of stuff is starting to come out about science, which is, you know, people call it manifestation or whatever. Um, But like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the stuff you said about having a vision. Like I've been reading a lot about yeah. that both in the Bible yeah. and on a scientific le- yeah. level. And it's really interesting to see that like it feels like who said it recently that the Bible is basically just a guidebook on how to be a human. And I was yeah. just like, and, and I'm really finding that lately yeah. and it's really interesting to read. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. That's why I was laughing when you said that story. It just felt very significant. There's a massive Bible inside in the sitting room. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's like Mary Magdalene. Who who's to ca- cast the first stone? Yeah, I always yeah. say that to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's to cast the first stone? Absolutely, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Yeah, and with Padre Piro as well, what I've been reading about him is really interesting. Is like um, 
the, you know, saying people saying he faked the stigma. It didn't. I what I was reading about Padre Pio is he didn't have the best time having those like abilities. It didn't sound like he actually enjoyed it as like I don't think he was faking it because I don't think he was he wanted the responsibility. It took yeah. him years to deal with that and stuff like that. And I was reading about like the amount of people that would come to his mass and stuff because he because they'd watch him go into a trance lights a trance like state and Padre Pio throughout his life seemed to never be like. He never came across as holier than thou. He was no, just he this didn't. Normal. No, no. Yeah, because he just, he just, and he used to say that he wasn't the one doing it. Like he was sort of channeling God or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, and it wasn't. He wasn't saying like I'm some saint. Like do you, you we made right. him a saint. You know what yeah, I mean? He, like, he was just a disciple of God. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Spreading the message. Yeah. Um, the same as same as a lot of them, and yeah. then people I think get the wrong idea that like all these saints thought they were holier than thou. But the thing is. Is the saints never called themselves saints? We no, did it no, saints, and that's the no. Yeah. Maybe that's a bad thing that we're all calling them saints and putting them in boxes. You know, they're yeah, it makes but them something else. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Um, this is Michael. Is yeah. it Michael? Did you ever yeah. introduce Michael to the podcast? To explain Michael. his jumper. Oh yeah, it's Crohig jumper. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> ha- Haley's friend. The <laughs> he's he's a Crohig jumper on. Ta da. He's yeah. He's um. Boy. He's joined the crew. We couldn't stop him. We couldn't help it. He's the same age as me, yeah. isn't he? Did you say it's your teddy? About like, that, yeah, yeah. That's mad. Um, yeah. He's got a life of his own. And yeah. He's a, yeah. Yeah. He's got one of those kind of spirits that sort of <laughs> yeah lives on and, yeah. and powers forth. So yeah, he's he's unstoppable in his little crocodile jersey. That's funny. Yeah. Um, should we finish up yeah, now? Anyway, hey, thanks for coming on. That was a really so good conversation. Right. Thanks very There's much. Yeah, that's brilliant. It is, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, if any, if anyone needs their uh, tiles written down, the contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, extension uh, on the house. And uh, I'm an old mad Republican, so there you go. I'm an old mad Republican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you. Yeah, no, thanks a million for coming on. Yeah, yeah. fair play. So, oh yeah, before we finish, Kieran and Haley, have you anything else you'd want to say? What? <laughs> <laughs> before we finish, I said, Kieran and Haley, do you have anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to say anything, uh, Haley? No, I'm all right, thanks. Okay, what about you, yeah. Kieran? Uh, like and subscribe. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> like, like and subscribe to the podcast, and yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, have Patreon. Oh yeah, pay, uh, if you want to see no guest episodes, we haven't been uploading at the moment. So, but patreoncom slash Ireland's podcast and that last episode is kind of oh yeah, two your two your a month. Will some you tell him to take that down. We will give it a go. <laughs> I'll ask him, but he's yeah. yeah. Do you want to see if Michael's got anything else to say? Are you anything else to say, Michael? Go on, ask him. Michael, have you anything to say? No, I don't think so. Sure. Um, <laughs> what I was going to say there as well. Uh, yeah, the sun sun is coming out and. Uh, don't pressure yourself to do things you don't want to do. Just take things slowly. If if you don't even have, like this whole thing of make if even making your bed is hard one day, just at least open up the curtains in your house. And if you don't want to do anything else after that, just do that. And uh, yeah, just let the light into the house, and, and all will be well. And brush your teeth if you can at least do that. Like you'll yeah. Yeah. have good denture. And go to bed. And go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, good night. Good day. Uh, good morrow to you. Yeah. Right. See ya. Bye. 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 <laughs>